Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley and today I'm going to talk to you about a very delicate subject. What is that subject? Domestic violence. Domestic violence. Domestic violence occurs throughout the country. There are cases every day in every city, county, state throughout our country. The vast majority of domestic violence cases should have never been filed. Let me explain. What exactly is domestic violence? Usually, it's a husband or a wife, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, two lovers, someone who's dating, whether it's two guys, two girls, family members, it could be an uncle and an aunt, it could be, it could be a, uh, a child and a, and a parent. When I say child, I mean you know an 18-year-old um, otherwise, you're talking about child abuse. Um, there are so many parameters that go into domestic violence, but generally, it has to do with partners, people who either have children together, live together, date, or are married. So there's so many underlying things that come out of domestic violence. Sometimes it's a neighbor who hears an argument, and they call the police. And sometimes you have an overzealous police officer, and he goes, look, if I'm out here on a domestic violence, I'm charging somebody. Because I'm putting my life on the line. If you talk to police officers across the country, and I'm not advocating because I'm a defense attorney. I don't want you to talk to any police officer, right? <laughs> Unless it's to say, hey, how you doing? And keep going. Um, but if you talk to police officers throughout the country, they'll tell you the calls that they worry about the most are domestic violence calls. That's when officers you know, can get injured. Because if there's a serious situation at the house and someone's pulled out a knife or a gun, or even if not, just their bare hands. Sometimes their, their tempers are so out of control, that's when an officer is actually in danger. Um, but again, I'm not here to advocate for police officers or, or anything like that. I'm just kind of telling you what I believe the facts to be. So domestic violence, um, assault battery, false imprisonment, stalking, all of these things are very common charges. But again, falsely reported. How do these things happen? Maybe you're going through a divorce. It's one way to help get child, um, child, you know, primary child custody, right? What if you're not married and you're dating, and you file for you? You say that you've been uh, battered, um, even a misdemeanor. Guess what? That can help expedite immigration. Um, there's so many factors. There's so many defenses to a domestic violence case. You just don't know what, you know, I don't know what I'm dealing with until I get folks in the door. But let me tell you, who's coming in the door to hire me? 98%. Listen, folks, what did I say? 98%. That means 98 out of 100 people that walk into my office on a domestic violence case, it's the alleged victim, the person who was harmed, the person who was so scared, the person who they feared for their life. That's who's hiring me to represent their wife, their husband, their cousin, their, their girlfriend, their boyfriend. That, that's who's hiring me, all right? So that leads you to believe there might be something skewed in the facts of a police report. I have individuals come into my office and go, Mr. Foley, I was drunk. I, I, threw, a, I, I, you know, I threw a punch at my husband and, and I, I started hitting him and you know, he held me back. But I didn't tell the police all of that. So it's not all the policeman's fault, folks. When you're in a disagreement with, with your family members, do your best to walk away. Calling the police nearly always ends up in an arrest. Let, let's not do that unless we're serious, unless we're, it's a serious, not even serious. If it's a true domestic violence case, then obviously. But don't do it to get retribution. Don't do it because you're trying to get child custody. Don't do it because you're trying to get immigration status. Um, there's so many things. Now, then you have the cases that deal with you know, mental health, where people have mental health issues and, and, and domestic violence um, can be obviously closely related. If someone has a mental illness, um, then it's more likely that they may lose control um, of their temper. Um, sometimes it's spiteful family members. Um, where you have you know, a mother-in-law or a father-in-law that are just too involved. So 
These are all the things that are going in. When, when I say domestic violence, there, there's so many things. And I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I've had cases, folks, um, that are just plain ridiculous. I've had a husband talking to his wife, arguing, getting into an argument about the amount of alcohol that she was drinking. That she decides that she's going to go for a ride in the vehicle, in the family car, at midnight. And he stands in front of the door to prevent her from leaving because she's drunk or intoxicated. And he fears for her life. Obviously, he could pick up the phone and dial 911, but then his wife is potentially going to get arrested for DUI. So he stands in front of the door. Maybe he grabs the keys. She dials 911. The police come. He gets arrested. Should that case go forward? No. And you know what the good thing is, folks? That although the criminal justice system is screwed up as it can be, it also works a lot of the time. And cases like that, they go away. You know, if you hire, if you hire an attorney, if you hire someone that's got a big mouth, I got a big mouth, right? If you hire someone that can articulate a sentence and explain what the heck was going on to a prosecutor, you got a good chance of a case like that going away. The one thing that no attorney can promise you is a result. Police officers tell you, you might beat the case, right? You may beat the case, but you're not beating the ride, buddy. You're going. You're going to sit in custody for 12 to 24 hours. You're going to pay a bond. You're going to have to spend money for an attorney. But folks, a lot of domestic violence cases go away. In my 11 years as a defense attorney, I don't know if I've had one or two that were legit. I honestly don't know. Obviously, I don't know the truth. The truth is between the two individuals, whatever witnesses were there, if any, and, and the man upstairs. And you know who I'm talking about, right? So, and I don't mean the neighbor upstairs on the second floor. <laughs> I mean the big man upstairs, right? Besides that, we don't know the facts. When, when our neighbor hears yelling or screaming, yeah, they're concerned, they call the police. Sometimes it's just an argument. People argue. So out of all... All the cases that I have, 98% of the time, it's a bogus case. Again, that doesn't mean that the 2% that are serious when someone gets stabbed or shot or killed or beaten up or beaten to a pole, nobody should live like that. And I'm not advocating for that. Obviously, I'm a criminal defense attorney and luckily I get to choose my cases, but I've never, ever had a man or a woman come into my office that I shut, bruised, broken jaw, I've never had it. Now, that could just be my particular office. It just, it hasn't happened. Um, I did have a young lady that was stabbed. But when I found out the story, the judge actually got mad because the first day of court, he goes, Mr. Foley, what do we got going on here? I said, well, judge, I'm expecting the state to make an announcement. And this, he goes, state? And what is an announcement, folks? An announcement is when the state attorney announces a dismissal. So when the judge asked the prosecutor, well, I mean, you're announcing a, dis you know, a dismissal? The prosecutor goes, no. This man stabbed his wife or his girlfriend, whatever it was at the time. And the judge gave me a lecture. He actually stood up on the bench and he started yelling at me and reprimanding at me. And I told him at the end, although... Hey, I, 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 no one wants to get yelled at and reprimanded by a judge, but again, I can talk. Judge, there's two sides to every story. You're reading a police report. The police weren't there. This came after the fact. I believe that as the information comes to light, that the state will be making an announcement. Several months later, a deposition is taken of the alleged victim. I get a statement. I get all of the facts. What happens? Nine months later, Mr. Foley, uh, are you ready for trial? Judge, I think the state has an announcement. State? Yes, Judge, we're going to be announcing a null process on the case, case number, blah, 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 state of Florida versus blah. I smiled inside. I didn't say anything to the judge. I knew that I did my job. Make sure when you hire an attorney that he does his job. Now, you may not know that. So how do you figure that out? You check with the Florida bar. You read reviews. You talk to the person. You find out, have they done this? 
Again, this isn't a video about lawyers or judges or, or my war stories. This is a, a, a short video, which has gotten way too long right now, 10 minutes, to talk to you a little bit about domestic violence. If you're charged with domestic violence, folks, there's hope. But make sure, make sure that you don't rush to plea bargain your case. You don't walk in there and let some attorney go, hey, there's no defenses to it. You don't talk to your attorney. Because if you plea a domestic violence case, it stays on your life for life. It stays on your record for life. That means it doesn't come off. That means everyone who does a background check on you will see it. It requires mandatory jail. It can imprisonment. You cannot seal it. You cannot expunge it. It can have immigration consequences. It's one of the factors that they look at if you're trying to get immigration and you have this on, on your record, you may not be able to come become a citizen or renew your green card. So folks, there's so much on domestic violence. I could probably do 50 videos on it and I may end up doing piece by piece. If you have a request, if you are yearning for some knowledge and I can help you, you know, write into my office or contact my office and I'd be happy to give you um, give you some knowledge, okay? I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Thanks for listening.